What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to my weathering tutorial how to weather a Krieg vehicle. So, uh, here's the completed model it's got um, dust effects, grime effects, a little bit of a wash to dull down the bright blue color, the blue gray color, and uh, I think it looks great. So, this is how I do it, and these are the products that I use. I also want to make sure that you guys know that I've already finished from the beginning of this video I finished painting up the base coats and uh, I finished the spotlight and I put the transfers on okay so mechanic is standard gray um, streaking grime AK interactive the rest of the products that I use are AK interactive products so fuel stains that looks like a enamel wash for interiors dust effects and tracks wash and odorless thinner or white spirit which I got a huge uh, container of that there on a, a special deal I got it off of eBay so I'm very happy with that so here's what your model will end up looking like and let's begin so like I said I started by painting up the model. This is what it looks like and uh, the first color we're going to use is Mechanicus Standard Gray and I'm actually using a sponge from a foam carrying uh, plug foam case or I guess tray foam tray and what I'm doing is I'm taking the foam <coughs> and I'm dipping it into the paint pot so I've got a nice amount of paint there you can see on the end of my sponge there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it out through the sponge and I'm going to dampen it and then I'm just gonna press it and uh, get the majority of the paint off so that you've only got some paint on the edge of the sponge there which we are going to just sponge onto the hard edges of the, the armor plates. So this is going to be the natural wear and tear where people walking, grabbing, uh, machine scraping, equipment banging into the hard edges there are going to scratch and chip the paint and um, while I'm doing this you can see that I try to hit every hard edge and I also try to get in between the different armor plates so when it goes down the side of the model in a second you'll be able to see that I try to pinch the sponge so that I have most of the paint in the center where I can control it and then I kind of dab it down the center. So there's one example, just dab it around the edge of the armor plate and it kind of creates a very random and natural look. If you are seeing lines of paint, it means that you've got too much paint on your sponge and when it's going onto the model, instead of just dabbing on in small little patches, it's uh, kind of really layering on to the model, which we don't want. We want it to create kind of random tiny little dots there. So there's the dozer blade. And uh, yeah, there have been no washes on this model. So basically I took this model, this uh, Centaur Light Assault Carrier. I sprayed it with the fang and I just dry brushed rust gray and a little bit of Fenrisian gray, not too much. And then I went into this um, chipping. I also did the tracks in Mechanicus Standard Gray, I believe. and. Just do the silver bits and the um, gold detailing, and that's about it. So very simple color scheme. I use scorch brown for the leather seats in the back, and yeah, here I am going one more time, getting just enough paint so that I can dab it onto the bottom here. If you look at the bottom of the wheels there, you can see that I'm just trying to dab it on and. Uh, it's going to get covered with a lot of other weathering effects, but the um, underlying idea is that each piece of armor has been scraped and has seen battle and is not fresh off the factory floor, which is uh, that's kind of the effect that I wanted to go with with this Krieg commission. It makes your models look a little bit more natural and lifelike and realistic, and that's kind of what uh, I like to achieve, if possible. I mean, you talk about realistic, and it's you know Warhammer 40k, so it's pretty unrealistic as it is. But 
yeah, you just do what you can. So originally, the original color that works the best is carrot and granite. So if you've got that, use that instead. Mechanica's standard gray is kind of like the closest thing. Uh, it doesn't have any of the awesome dark brown that carrot and granite had. Did somebody say dark brown? No, dark brown. So um, I guess another alternative could be like Skaven Blight Dinge or Storm Vermin Fur, but... I tried both of those and because they they had the, the brown was a little bit too uh, light it kind of blended into the blue so because Mechanica standard gray is a really solid gray color it shows up as chipping really nicely in fact if you want you could add a little bit of Abaddon black to it and make it even um, more obvious with the chipping okay so I painted a little bit of or I got a little bit of this paint onto the spotlight that's not what I want so I'm just taking some Stegadon scale green and I am uh, painting over the mistake that I just made. To do my spotlight, I painted the entire thing black, and then I took Stegadon scale green, and I painted it in a very heavy crescent, and then I painted Sotek green and blended it up to, I think, Temple Guard blue is the finest highlight, but you don't want too much Temple Guard blue or else it'll get too bright. And then I just washed it with uh, Art Coat to make it nice and shiny. Speaking of washes, here's the Trax wash, and when you paint this onto your Trax, it's going to get really um, dark brown, oily. Did somebody say dark brown? No. Dark, oily, focus, there we go. So uh, the tricky part when painting weathering onto your Trax is that you can't forget to paint onto the side of it. A lot of people are so uh, caught up painting like mud or or snow or whatever onto the front of the track, the top, that they forget that there's um, the sides of the tracks as well. So you've got to paint whatever effects you're going to do on the sides. Okay, so this is a personal preference. You don't have to paint the bottoms of the tracks since normally you won't be able to see them unless <clears throat> you're going to turn your vehicle over to simulate a wreck. But um, if you don't want to, you don't have to paint the bottom of the tracks. Uh, I'm doing that now just because I'm a completionist and perfectionist and I like to have everything look pretty even. But uh, if you're running out of paint or um, you just don't want to do it, you're more than welcome to not. It won't ruin your paint job if you don't paint the bottom of the tracks. This is such a cool model, the Centaur Light Assault Vehicle. Really like it. So this video is, while well, I'm finishing up, I might as well talk about this, is also a appreciation video. It's an appreciation video for July Painting Challenge participant Thomas Alden. So Thomas Alden did a project that had some space marines, but the majority of his guys were these Eisenkern stormtrooper looking guys. And uh, they are, they kind of look like very heavily armored World War II um, and they can, uh, they've got like the gas masks, but they're very futuristic looking. And I actually picked up a set just because I was curious. And I think I picked up like a heavy weapon set of them. And they are pretty awesome. You can use them as a Death Corps of Krieg uh, grenadiers or stormtroopers um, if you're going, if if you want, because they're they're pretty cheap alternative compared to what you would be paying for for the Death Corps of Krieg alternative. So check him out, and you can see how he did his uh, Eisenkern troopers, in, like Imperial Guard proxies. <clears throat> I 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to use is Streaking Grime. And this is a tricky product because uh, if you even use like a little bit too much, it's going to be really, really thick. So what I like to do is, uh, what I realized was I <laughs> the tracks were all wet. So I, I turned the camera off for a little while and I put it under the lamp and I turned it upside down. That way the bottoms would dry first and, um, and then we can keep going. So before I put on the streaking grime, I realized I'm going to need to put some of this track wash onto the bottom of the dozer blade just to stimulate or simulate the um, mud in the trench works that this guy would be trundling over. Trundle, 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 as Josh would say. And so I'm just painting it on in a very random pattern. And uh, you're going to find with your streaking effects that if you use a brush like an older brush where the bristles are kind of frayed that might actually work f better for you than a nice brush because you'll be able to get a good random um, random kind of pattern to when you're doing your streaking grime okay yeah so here we go streaking grime this is to simulate uh, I guess like lots of rainfall and dirt that kind of drips down the side of the armor plate and uh, kind of dries and uh, gets all grimy and streaky. I guess streak and grime, hence the name. Brilliant! So uh, if you let it sit or if you let the product stand, the grime, the brown dark pigment is going to kind of sink to the bottom of the bottle and usually I like to start with that because I can kind of get a feel for uh, what I'm really painting with right now is just kind of the oil that kind of separates at the top and then if you want if you shake your bottle up a little bit then you get some of that dark brown pigmentation at the bottom into the uh, neck of the bottle and that way if you're painting with the oil at the top of your product then you can just add in a little bit by wiping it around the neck of the bottle and then it adds in a little bit of pigmentation so you can kind of experiment and work at your own pace which is what I'm doing right now I'm just kind of giving some some depth and brown color to the uh, edges of the armor plates and the goal with this is not only do you want to hit every single rivet it doesn't have to be hard, you don't have to put a lot of color there, but you just want to um, put a little bit of shading around each rivet to uh, kind of make them pop a little bit. You're also going to be following all of the hard lines of the armor plates where they meet other pieces of the body of the tank. So here in the corners, this is where grime would accumulate after a heavy rain. So we're going to uh, line any any angle or any crease where the uh, armor plates and the metal the metals would meet so right here is another one and this is I, I don't know why I find it weathering I find the weathering so uh, relaxing and rewarding and fun it's a great break from painting your regular guys and if you know I'm using a centaur light assault carrier but you could use these techniques on like a Lehman Russ on a chimera um, it's pretty much the same color as the Militarum Tempestus Scions, which are the new Stormtroopers. It's this kind of powdery blue-gray. So uh, all of these techniques would work for that as well, even if you don't collect Death Corps of Krieg and are doing this blue color scheme. If you're doing Militarum Tempestus Scions, guys, then there are uh, Tarox vehicles, anything you can use these techniques to weather them and make them look very realistic and very awesome okay so we're continuing here and just really going kind of easy with it you, you'll notice that there's not a lot of brown um, boy if you if you if you do too much of that grime it really really will make an impact because it's so dark and so uh, so thick of a color 
So I'm gonna use it how it's supposed to be used right now. You're supposed to streak the grind downwards by using downward strokes, very light. And here's where I realized, oh my, my brushes, the bristles are kind of fraying just a little bit, so they'll show up really nicely. Uh, if you put too much streaking grime on your brush though, what you can do is use white spirit or that thinning medium that I showed you and what that will do is you just paint it around the area and it'll break up the pigment make it kind of uh, thin down. Uh, it's perfect for if you put too much weathering pigment or powder in one area and you want to um, kind of undo the effect that you just did. Just put a little bit of white spirit on the tip of your brush and just um, paint it onto whatever you just did and it will spread it out really nicely it'll dilute it it'll make it almost disappear like it was never there in the first place and white spirit is also what you use to clean your brushes so after using enamel paints like these AK interactive products a lot of them are enamel paints and uh, if you just put it into a cup of water you're you're not gonna get them clean in fact the enamel might dry the oil might dry on your your paintbrush and kind of mess it up so you want to be able to clean it with the the thinning medium I guess or the white spirit if you can and that'll really save you in the long run lots of great um, corners here in the front you've got the little visor for the driver driving compartment and the little gunner slot And you'll, you'll really notice how realistic the uh, streaking grime when painted on the rivets and into all of the creases. It really adds that touch of realism to your vehicles. And the reason why we do this before the paint chipping is because uh, the paint chipping is kind of ages, it, it kind of ages the vehicle a little bit more. This accumulated grime can be scrubbed off with a lot of uh, elbow work, but once paint is chipped, on your vehicles then uh, it kind of stays that way until it goes back to the you know the manufactorum for another paint job but um, my, my process for weathering vehicles is always after you're done painting it when you're ready to start weathering start with the chipping then do this streaking grime around the rivets around all the plates and uh, here I brought out the other one the finished one to kind of uh, do an identical what I was doing was a streaking grime effect kind of like an acid rain effect down the front of the dozer blade right there. <clears throat> Just want to make them match up so that they look identical. And yeah, look at if if you can get a good angle of checking out the dozer blade, if you if you can see that streaking grime product really is really really nice when you make it a streak across a large flat surface area like the dozer blade. Okay, what am I using next? Fuel stains. Fuel stains, these, this stuff is fantastic. It's kind of like caramel. It reminds me of caramel. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna paint it around the uh, gas caps. So, right here. And even if you, what I think is awesome is that if you look at the Forge, Forge World website under their Centaur product, you'll see that there is a painted example when it shows you from the back that they also painted a kind of leaking fuel or leaking gasoline effect onto their model. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's perfect. That's what I'm going to do with mine too then. So you've got two gas caps on your Centaur and they're right at the back on both sides. And you'll notice that the fuel stains is, the product is really oily and like I said really thick and caramel looking so just looks awesome okay the next product we're gonna use is a wash for interior so this is what I use for the entire model and I think you can do this either before or after the fuel stains Usually I do it before I think I got over eager and I did the fuel stains first, but 
I, it's really interchangeable because this is the one that's gonna tie the grime into the color and it's gonna tie the uh, tie all the colors together so you just take a, a larger brush than you've been using because we've been using detail brushes to get into the rivets and all of the armor plates this is a you could use a wash brush for it or a standard large headed brush It'd be perfect you just want to be able to get the wash onto the model spread it around and um, the, the bigger your brush is, the less time you have to spend on it, unless you have to worry about it. <sighs> oh my gosh, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm so happy I don't have to work today. Another awesome thing I noticed about this enamel wash for interiors is that uh, when it dries, it dries just a little bit glossy. So uh, you can really see where you hit it and where you missed it. And uh, if you notice that it, most of your area is shiny and glossy, but then there's one part that's really non-reflective, then that's an obvious indication that you <laughs> forgot to paint that part. I think yesterday when I was painting my test model, I forgot to do the wash on the entire dozer blade. And uh, I painted the entire model up and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, why, why does it look like it's missing something? The dozer blade was almost a completely different color without the wash to, to tie it down. So uh, don't forget to hit the back of your dozer, the sides, underneath. If you wanna do the uh, underneath the entire vehicle no one's really gonna see it but um, again that's if you want a complete finished look over everything all right so as you can see I, I did a wash on the interior of the of the vehicle and now I'm trying to finish up by painting up the sides I'm gonna start with the bottom of the tank first Yeah, actually, if I could do this again, I would probably do this wash before the fuel stains. I'd probably do the fuel stains last, um, just because of the glossy finish of the wash. I think that that makes it's gonna make the it's gonna make the fuel stain effect disappear. Now up and down the sides, you can see the little imperial eagle the double-headed eagle brass etch from the product that i reviewed yesterday it's so much fun to use but they're so fiddly and uh, i didn't realize this but when you put glue down super glue you gotta use super glue with them and then you put the the piece down the brass etch onto the model uh, sometimes it can be crooked and the super glue really sticks it almost immediately so i, I had almost no time to maneuver my crooked imperial eagle yesterday and uh, when I tore it off using the knife the hobby knife it kind of showed where the original setting was unfortunately so you can kind of see that if you're if you look closely but that's okay you live and you learn and that's awesome what a cool effect all these AK interactive effects are so they're so terrific they're so spot on and I think if, if I didn't have them and I was using like games workshop only products that'd be probably that'd be pretty tough probably okay back to the fuel stains I think I'm going into now here like in the front section I have no idea what this is but to me it kind of was a perfect place to have some fuel leaking out and also, if I could do this again, I would add some black soot underneath the unit numbers. You see those two little vents down the sides? That's probably where I would add some soot, uh, some black powder. You just use a dry brush and uh, dry brush that black powder onto those vents and down the side to kind of show the oily residue of the engine. And uh, and then just use some, some matte varnish or some white spirit to lock it into place.
So now we're going to let everything dry and we're going to come back. I'm going to clean my brushes right now with the AK Interactive uh, White Spirit here. And when we come back, we're going to do the dust effects on the tracks. And that's the, the last thing we're going to do, I think. So stay tuned for that. And here we go through the magic of film and television and the internet. It's all dried and we're going to dust effect. So the dust effect is kind of like a white milky but also gritty kind of compound or product. And so uh, what I'm doing is I'm kind of spattering it onto the front of the dozer blade. Trying to keep most of it near the front on the teeth and then just kind of spreading it across the front the blade itself the tricky thing is that it's a it's it's a liquid the dust effects is not dust it's an actual liquid with white um that dusty material on the inside of it so you got to be careful about how you spread it across flat surfaces like the dozer blade you want to be random and and not look like you have um, individual brush strokes because that, that'll give you away. Alright, and the last thing we're doing is just taking the, the dust effects and we're spattering it across the sides. So thanks for watching everybody. My July painting challenge continues through the end of the month of October along with Spooky Toberfest. Please check out Thomas Alden's channel. He's a great guy. And uh, everybody, everybody's great. <laughs> if you did it, if you took part in the July painting challenge, I think you're great. And I'm going to do a video for you. So thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Hit the like button. And uh, let me know what you think of weathering these Death Corps of Creed videos. Thanks again for watching. Latest players. Thumbs up.